Um, Simon, the first film was obviously hugely successful um, worldwide. With <laughs> because both, of you. <laughs> because of you uh, and, um, and your fellow uh, cast members and JJ. Um, with, and both Trekkers and newcomers alike really um, embraced it. But what was it about the screenplay um, of Into Darkness that sort of drew you back in and made you abandon your Christmas shopping, I believe, as well? It did. No, it was just, you know, I, it's been four, it had been four years since we did the first one. And when I got the script, I was, I was in New York and I was... Um, I, I got back to my hotel and, and Brian Burke, our producer, was there to meet me, gave it to me. And I was with a friend and I said, I'm gonna go, I've am gonna. i got to read the first page. I've been waiting to read this script for a very long time. I'll be done in five minutes. I called him immediately after reading the first page and said, I'm not coming down. Uh, I'll Christmas shop on in, online. And I, and I read it and I was excited to see what we were all gonna do next. Uh, and I was immediately drawn into the story and I found myself just utterly excited by what I saw. It was, it was brilliantly exciting. And I concur. You're a new recruit, of course, um, yes. to the Enterprise, Alice. Yes. What did you make of the 2009 first film and obviously Simon's performance in, in particular? Well, I am actually Simon's number one fan. And I asked if we could be paired together in this because he just makes me happy, really. Um, and so I'm glad he's in this one more. Scotty's a bit of a hero in this one, but I loved the first film. I thought it was beautiful, and that's you know why I was so excited to work with JJ. And what can you tell us about Carol's place um, aboard the Enterprise? Can you do that? Well, I mean, looking at it from the outside, when I first saw her name in the script, uh, it was uh, exciting, because Karen Marcus is a figure from Star Trek history, not just from the, the second uh, 1982 film, but also from the, the original series. So A, it was exciting because it was Karen Marcus, but B, and perhaps more importantly, it was exciting because it was Alice Eve. Thanks. I love the relationship between Carol and um, Kirk. What did you enjoy about creating those sparks that really fly between them? Um, y you know, you always hope that when you uh, have to sort of have a little bit of spark, as you say, that it will come naturally, and it, it did. Chris is very present as an actor, and um, he's also got really beautiful blue eyes, so just look at them and do some sparking. Hell yeah. And You've done it too. I find it hard to look into Chris's eyes sometimes. It's like looking into a beautiful pool. He does have beautiful eyes. I have heterochromia. I think you have heterochromia I have heterochromia too. as well, but yours is like... Heterochromia is different coloured eyes like David Bowie, and we both have it. I have, I have flecks of brown in one eye. You've got two amazing, beautiful one eyes. One green and one <laughs> uh, One green so and one So that's why you're, you're prepared to get the print. Yeah, we're deeply really. in love with each yes. other. Is there some romance going on perhaps with um, Scotty and, and Keensar, that alien of few words, or is that strictly platonic? I like to think there's a little subtext there. It's a kind of odd couple, uh, you know, I, I, I'd like to think in the future that any kind of relationship was possible, not just between human beings, but also between humans and aliens. And I hope that it's... Why? Well, because we want equality. You know, it's hard enough on planet Earth at this time. But I would like to think that, you know, maybe if Scotty was um, in but the But you mean in the movie, not in real life? Yeah. Oh, I don't mean... I don't mean with, like, animals. I mean, that would be weird. But sentient uh. beings. If you went to, say, Proxima Centauri and there was this hot alien guy there, but he was blue and he had four arms, but you, you loved him, and you thought, I, I, I feel attracted to you, I would support that relationship. I wouldn't be like, no in way, four arms, blue people. <laughs> in real life, you mean, or in the movie? Would that happen in real life? Carol Marcus, you mean, goes to find the four-armed blue man, or Alice Eve goes to find the four-armed blue man? Well, I mean, anybody. I'm, pro I'm, I'm sort of hypothesising a future where, where humans and aliens make love. He started it! Oh, uh, <laughs> I mean, that would be very complex. I think Keynes and, and Scotty are best friends. Um, certainly in the other timeline, Scotty was straight because I think he ended up with Ahura. But, um, you know, what the hell? Let's have some fun. Mix it up a bit. You got Ahura. Yeah, he does, Lucky yeah. Lucky you. Just another film to come. And why does Spock end up with Ahura in this one, then? Oh, so it's all, it's all changed. So you no, no. Know this. That's in the... Because uh, JJ split the universe, mm -hmm. so in the original one you're saying that, right? In the original universe, yeah. Um, but in this one it was a nice little surprise, you know, that Spock and Ahura had found love. Of course, the, bu the brilliance of the first film was that by splitting the timeline, you not only kept the original canon completely intact, and the very presence of Leonard Nimoy confirmed that, but you're also able to start again completely, so it, all bets are off. Any one of us could be killed, any one of us could hook up with another one. You know, who knows? Heterochromia. Heterochro the heterochromia twins might get it on. Simon Pegg, Alice Eve, thanks very much. Thank, Thank you. you. Enjoy talking for Arm um, Aliens with you.